I'll start filming now because this could be it. You ready? Get ready. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we we thank Chris Gale on spotting the the uh, correct shade of Val on the rocker cover and cam belt cover. We were too too light, so thanks Chris and everybody else that noticed that one. Um, yeah, I uh, finished the air cleaner refurb just up there, and it looked wrong against the lighter shade, of course. So. We've had it redone and the explanation at the powder coaters was 5010 Gentian Blue. Funnily enough, whilst the RAL is 5010, Gentian is lighter, more going towards the roses tin. So they uh, they sprayed the wrong one on. Suffice to say, no charge and everything back to normal colours. So that solves that, so I'll just rebuild this now, put all the clips back on it. We've got to do the valve clearances. Someone point out uh, someone pointed out you gotta don't put the carb on because you can't get to the valve clearances or it's harder to get to the valve clearances. The only reason why everything's being bolted up like this is so that we know what nuts and bolts are present or anything that we have to fish out and find. Some alliteration there for you. Uh, to um assemble everything then you take it all off again so the only way you can know how it all that you've got everything is to put it all on mock it up on a first fix if you will then wherever needed take it back off so in terms of setting the valve clearances it is easier with the carburetor off and you do need a special tool or I say special tool let's go over and have a look if you're doing this at home it's a very blue peter line there let's have a look what we got our special tools draw a thing to invest in is a good snap on or a snap on they're all good tool draw this is a sacrificial spanner was not a particular good make just a a cheapo although reasonably strong spanner which is bent 13 mil then this is used to help you get in to the nuts of the carb which can be tricky, especially this one here. Look how that fits in. The other tools are available, but I made this for next to nothing. Then just put a bar through the top and you can undo that nut. It does take only small turns to get it, but it works every time. So I use that, if anything, just for that nut. The ones can be reached with a socket angle adapter, although I use this for all of them. In it goes and that gets your carb off on those 13 carb bolts quite easily a little homemade specialist tool there are a few other specialist tools that I have for it this one's me brake caliper free up tool uh, air connection to the brake caliper I also use this to test any leaks on the brake lines I pressurized the system and actually locked the calipers on with air They're unlocked now uh, a couple of other tools we know about this one is the spline tool for the cam belt tensioner there's a few other bits cylinder head uh, star drive and this uh, mark and j mark free owners club ball joint separator handy various sump plug bolts and there's our feeler gauges we're going to be needing them are they the metric ones we want yep well it actually doesn't matter metric or imperial 0.20 and 0.25 so let's keep them out. So keep your tools organised, what we're saying there. We need to do the valve clearances and get it out of the way. I've got to admit, I do not enjoy doing the valve clearances. As you probably know by listening to Ruby's Rattly Cam at the moment, I'll say Cam. That's was set and then after X amount of miles you've got to reset them and it needs doing. 
let's do these cover off feel the gauges in and then another a crow's foot spanner needed we'll talk about that in a sec setting the valve clearances let's do it and get it out of the way because then I can bolt the rocker cover on because if we're going to be firing the engine up you need the cover on we also need to finalize the spray bar because it may or may not have a small rubber eyelet washer on the spray bar center fixing point I need to confirm that I've been going on about that for a while now so it's time to go and look at um, an engine that's not been messed with and see if the spray bar comes off a little rubber o-ring if it does I'm missing them and I'll have to borrow it off that engine I've got a spare engine in the wings a 1600 engine which was destined to go into Bramble uh, TC the estate car so we're now going to do valve clearances jig is in engine hoist is in engine comes with a little ch uh, hoist comes with a little chain that I've made to hook into these engine lift points because once we do the valve clearances and go over the engine and just double check everything we're going to lift it off this stand it's not needed the stand now the stands primarily really to rotate the engine and there's no need to rotate now we've done the sump and then we we'll lift it off the stand then it's going to be really dangling on the chains and it's at that point I'm going to bolt the flex plate on and then fit the gearbox on gearbox weights over there ready to go on what we do need to find is the gearbox securing nuts I'm hoping they're going to be standard nuts doesn't the torque converter didn't come with them where these have been placed I don't know so we've got to hope that we've got some nuts here for that and we've got to dig out the flex plate we've got to hope we've got it and flex plates are like gold dust that's the Pinto A4 gearbox to Pinto flex plate very limited production time where Pintos were mated up to an A4 before the Pinto was replaced with the double overhead cam engine which is different so there's plenty to be thinking about plenty to do on the lockdown we've got the gearbox can go on we've got the valve clearances to do we've got to go back over the engine again and just double check here's those securing bars nicely powder coated and fitted onto the back of the pump Cor correct spec exactly copied across from originals powder coated up they mount onto the engine mount there. I think Gareth was asking from the Mark III Club he's got a, an estate car he was asking where those were a while ago now uh, I think he asked that question on the Cortina Mark III forum power steering as well look it's uh, the boots off slid back and we're dry here very clean very clean because it's never been used but dry so I'm going to put not a lot but some Livium grease on that knuckle ball and socket joint there a little bit on that rod the rest of it's filled with fluid because it's hydraulic so there's no need for any lubrication in the middle the fluid does that we could lift this and see if the uh, if there's anything in there needs doing I think there is a little rack and pinion actually this hasn't got fluid in it I don't think has it this is a ram yes it has so there won't be a rack in there there is a rack in here because it needs to operate as a normal steering rack if the fluid fails this is just assistance on a ram so it is a normal rack so we could do a scene if it's dry in there as well curious as to why it would be so dry very clean but as I said some light engineering oil on it there but nothing I don't think that's sufficient lubrication I will go for lithium grease not a lot of it because if you pump too much in it's just going to find its way out or mess about in there and you've got these pressure release uh, tubes or e equilibrium tubes and you don't want to gunk everything up with too much grease so not to go crazy there but both ends need doom we've got new ties to put back on them so we'll do that as well so plenty of little jobs to be doing tie bar and uh, uh, roll bar anti front anti roll bar upright brackets on with the bushes tightened down squeezed in front fixing bolts for the anti roll bar there so anti roll bars on and ready there it is almost finishing all the little jobs on the clip there's the power steering steering co coupling sorry that'll have to be cut down and, and welded because it's too long for the power steering you need a special um, 
power steering one we think you can get one off Granada's and they fit straight on we're going to investigate that if not this will go to an engineering company because I just you can't just butt weld this you can't just chop and weld this this will have to be properly reduced in size with a proper I would say to cut this and insert a pin into it uh, so that it's properly joined or you could cut then weld at the top but this will be welded by some I am not going to weld that it's going to be welded by uh, a pro if we use it we may find the Granada one I'm going to go, go looking for that because obviously you want to be running if that weld breaks you get your game over no steering very dangerous it has to be as strong as if not stronger than the original shaft must be so that needs looking at with expert attention cannot take any chances with this steering coupling okay so that's where we're up to plenty going on I'll put you on the tripod for doing the route a bit slower this time backwards I'll put you on the tripod for the valve clearances okay here we are ready to do the valve clearances you're gonna need feeler gauges then make your own crow foot spanner 19 mil or get the Sykes Pig Advance one or you can use a little crow's foot a little crow's foot 19 as well so that's to get to the the locking nut some of them are tricky to get to this is why we're using these we need that we also need let's uh, grab those in one hand a 19 spanner just in case you forget it's magnetically stuck to my tray holder hold hold <laughs> hold hold on sorry 19 and a 15 again magnetically stuck a 15 a 19 your crow's foot uh, what else I think that's it we're gonna rotate the crank round so that we get different positions on the camshaft and we're going to be adjusting when the lobes are far away from the rocker you can do two at a time always two land in a V shape I'll show you that in a minute when we bring you overhead but just running through the tools that you need okay this one as I said was homemade an earlier one I did out of an old bit of a gear selector chopped up spanner bit of nasty welding but we did it and it got us through the swampy days uh, car boot sales car shows and stuff slowly accumulate your bits is what I did until I knew what I was doing right it's 0.2 and 0.25 mil on your fingers of the uh, feeler gauges so we're going to do that now is it inlet 0.2 exhaust 0.25 let's check Haynes manual time okay first thing to do let's get the cover off just watch we don't scratch it on the automatic choke cover off we've got all those <coughs> tools ready just off screen a little bit for the microphone now okay we rock a cover off our crow's foot 19 a slimline 15 mil our gauge is there for this valve we're going to use we've turned it so that we've got access to two valves that are fully clear the lobe is the furthest away on both of them they end up making like a V shape these two if you looked at it from this end you'd see like a V so one two three four, five six three and eight are creating a sort of V shape which means they're both the furthest away from the follower the maximum clearance and that's the clearance you go for you can just do two at once each time you turn the cam you'll find you get a pair of these popping up so this one you put the feeler gauges under you now it's a little bit tight that one so we need to turn the 15 mil first loosen off the 19 if it's tight the lock nut so we undo this lock nut that's what you've got the cross foot for like that that releases the locking nut we can now turn it down a little bit till we can get the 15 mil because it's a 
sorry this is a uh, exhaust so we want it on 25 not 15 25 a 20 and a, a 5 still a bit tight going in just about going in quite a snug fit you could say that's all right actually that's okay there so I'll just lock the 19 back so as you can see what that tool is for now we don't really have a lot of torque locking them back and that's locked so that one is done we can now do this one before we turn the crank and get another pair popping up but we'll have to mark that we've set those now I'm just going to mark them with my pen that they've been set I'll rub it off after otherwise you can end up going back on yourself right this one is an inlet at this end you can just see it on your screen it's an inlet there so I'm working my way round towards you a little bit easier to get to than one, the one we've just done so we'll concentrate on this one set the feeler gauge to 0.20 because it's a uh, an inlet and look it's very slack there so here's that 15 the 19 might want loosening off A little bit and now we can turn the 15 round a little a lot easier to get to this side and see what we get still still too much clearance increasing the clearance so just the distance between the cam follower and the cam lobe at the point when it's furthest away in other words it's miles it's full clearance as that cam starts to turn this lobe will close the gap and then finally push on the valve so that's going in just grabbing it a little bit that's what you want just trying to nip and pinch the feeler gauge so now it's time to lock the 19 and that one's done might not be as bad as we think might get through it quicker than I thought as you turn and lock the um, as you turn and lock I've just remembered Oh, you learn as you go as you turn and lock it will try and readjust itself and mess it all up all your hard work so you've got to hold the 15 in on some of them they don't always turn as a, together but sometimes it will drag the, the ball stud with it that's just nipping it so that's okay I'll have to hold this now and then lock that otherwise the whole lot tries to turn and you mess your clearance up uh, around this side gets a bit tricky you've got feeler gauges in your hand you've got a 15 in your hand and the 19 but you find a way in the end that works it all comes flooding back as I say I've done this loads of times And this is it. I think this one's been a good one to demo for you. As long as the audio is picking up. We'll check it again in a sec. Because that moved down as well. So right, get into a lock point there. Let's check. It's closed it up, so we want to go down a little bit. So we can get our point 20 in, down on the ball stud, just just nipping it there now. You could also see if you can get your 25 in, in which case you know you're definitely over. I don't know why I, I haven't got 20 0.25 already is just a single gauge this one's folding up we're going to probably have to go and get a better feeler gauge than this it's not ideal that's all right there we can lock that but as I said hold the 15 as you lock it This tricky is fiddly and in the engine bay even worse this is a Sykes pick advance crow's foot spanner 
I don't like doing it, but that's it. That's two done. And because that's done, I'll mark it. Take that off after. And we're going to go through that procedure all the way. Some are tighter, some aren't. Some are trickier, some aren't. Let's see how we get on. I'm not going to film all that now. We've got six more to go. Wish me luck. Okay, that's all the clearance is done. And now I'm just going to make sure I'm going to put the rocker cover on. But we should just get our oil up, spun it up, and you'll see we've got the spray bar on. And then just turning it, making sure oil being delivered to all the spray bar points. So we're good there, we're primed up and good. All the galleys in that spray bar, all the little outlets, they're all dribbling the oil straight onto the lobes, so that's good. We can now fit the cam cover on. I'm using a rubber gasket on the cam cover as opposed to the cork one. Rubber gasket from Burton Power. So, drop that cam cover back on and bolt it down. Okay, rocker cover going on, some nice new 10mm, 10mm head bolts with nice washers. This one, just by the curb, a tricky one always. Just getting through a bit of powder coat in there. It's always hard just to, <clears throat> when you first get these, the powder coating just gets in the way a little bit. Can't quite get that to start, that one. Lined up, should go. Everyone else is lined up. No reason. Just the pure trickiness of it. Nope, it's lined up. Should go this one. I'm not going to tighten it up this one. This one's okay. There is an order. For the nuts and bolts to go, or the bolts, just to create an even spread of pressure. That one's got through the power coat. Oh, who's it? Okay, with the air filter on, a few other little bits and bobs just checked and running. A couple of detailing stickers on. Air pan there. So we're good to go on most of the bits on the, the engine. We're going to be getting ready to lift it off on the uh, engine hoist and see if we can get the, the flex plate and the gearbox on the back. We've got the clip. We've put a new seal on the boot, a new uh, retaining clip on the, on the gator for the power steering. And Put some livium grease just on the ball joint. I've got to do this side now, so open the steering up. I'm just going to untwist the wire tie. We're going to see if this is the same where it was totally dry on the tie. I can get this with my hands just. These are the original fittings, although they did use those spring ones you just saw, those chrome ones. But most commonly, these, but these are rusted, and whilst they're still in good order, I think that it's one of them things which can just rust. So, because I've got the steel 
the stainless steel clips I'm going to use those that comes off still in good order to be fair if we slide this back now that's quite dry as the, the rack is exposed there there is an oil of a kind on it but I would imagine that's a bit tired but they don't grease it unless the grease is broken down there's, I've been doing a bit of googling some people oil some people grease we'll put some Livium on there we just need to squeeze this other clip at the end and slide the boot back it's in good order inside nice and clean like the other side was so we'll just we'll give that a little bit of Livium and then reseal it up with the clip type like this look a bit nicer those a bit more factory these as I say are great but it's not coated with anything so it's going to be a rust spot eventually I suppose them stainless ones last forever so we'll do that now slide that back get that little clip out of the way there slide that back then reseal it and then that bit's done I put a Famoco sticker on because I had one then as I said I copied them yellow dots across I reckon it's an exchange unit anti-roll bar front as I said with the stabilizing bolts and that's about it for the clip there's a hole to drill in the end of here because the the uh, split pin broke inside it was that rusted so I'll re-drill that one out that one's done I put gal split pins on couple more split pins to fit I've had them galvanized so they're nice and rust proof and that's about it we can really uh, start getting closer to the job now that's done and uh, cover that back up and leave the clip till it's needed don't think there's anything else but what we've done the whole exercise was to get everything ready and out of the tubs and out of the trays so that you knew that you had all the parts just in case anything was missing really I think that's about it. The same applied to the engine, just in case I didn't have anything. I've built it all up. Quite a bit will be getting stripped back. When we test it, won't have the cam cover on or the air filter. And I'll probably start it up without the belts. We are missing a pulley bolt, can't find one for the alternator, so we can't spin it up anyway. That alternator wheel's not secured. And it's, an, it's a funny bolt. I don't know where it's got to. I've tried different alternator bolts, they're all different. I'm going to have to try and get one off Rotec. It's an AC127 Lucas alternator, that one. So, really, what we've done, we've got everything together ready. And now is the time to lift the engine off the uh, stand, just so I can get the dig out the flex plate. And we're using these ARP bolts for the flex plate. I'll see if I can find them for you. I'll show you what I mean with the ARP bolts. They're around somewhere. They could have been placed in the uh, assembly bench tray, possibly, because they were an item that's imminently going to be used. Let's have a quick look over here, just to see if we've got them. They're ARP, they Manufacture America. I think they're here. Here they are. Yeah, because we're going to use them. There they go. So that's a flex plate mounting kit you use this torque grease on the face of the bolt well underneath the, the contact face of the bolt so that you get the correct torque reading it reduces the friction gives you a more accurate reading the details are inside a little info pack installed inside the card so we'll get on and do that we'll, we'll get that flex plate bolted on it should be around I think this is it that's one of the items, that's the, the dust sandwich cover, the flex plate's down in stores. So we'll do that next. So you're going to get this camera on, the, well we're going to get this camera on the tripod. We're going to assemble the engine crane there, get it set up, take the air cleaner off. Using these hooks, lift up, release from the crane, release from the engine stand, and then remove the spigot bearing out of the crank bolt the flex plate on. Once the flex plate's on, there's nothing to stop the gearbox going on the back. Then once that whole assembly's built up, we lower it onto the test bed just over here 
and that's already been used and set up correctly for the Pinto with the A4 box that's the right spacing for the A4 box to land then we build it up on there that's going to be an exciting time we'll leave that for the next part of the film for now we'll leave you at this stage okay light be grease with Livium and then look at this ball joint at the end so it's nice and clean just need a little helping hand I say not too much on it'll only squadge out otherwise so that's done I'll turn the steering the other way now and it'll bring this boot a bit closer there's that release clip for the end that just goes on there and then that's done and we get our nice stainless steel uh, tie wrap and wrap it up that's that done okay boot slid back forward lovely detailing stainless clip going on these are nice got them from uh, got them from a car show you know when you have the auto jumble stand and stuff I've not seen them online I wouldn't know what you'd google for these clips if anyone wants to do the same I'm just one of them things I bought while I saw them and I thought one day they'll find a use somewhere and here they are so it's like a, a zip tie really chrome or stainless zip tie and in it goes I just get the pliers grip it lightly then you just bend and snap quite tight there we could get a screwdriver and just lock it hold on off screen for you I'm just wondering if I can lock that there just to get a little bit more of a pull through on it yeah that give us a little bit more there sorry about the shake then if I wrap that round it won't slip that just slipped hold that there that's about it that's it so you can pick your point where you break it off or use side cutters let's try the side cutters I think they're a one way affair once they're on they're on side cutters may or may not do this oh dear my knuckles go then Ow. ouch no so we want to make a clean break really let me get in because the camera's in the way so I'm just gonna sort of pinch it and score it and break it I'll do a, a bend and break that clip on then there we go okay with time it's time now I've got the engine crane in so welcome to the next episode where we're going to lift the uh, block the engine the whole thing off the stand so we should be in a position now we've got the chains connected okay let's just lock the valve on the lifting pump we should take up the slack hoping there's enough range on that piston there should be got a towel over just to protect things I'm just going to see where that chain goes if it's going to touch the air filter that's coming off I think we will be doing that what we don't want to do is put any force on any bits that we don't want so we shall now go around just get that chain in just the right place probably lift the air cleaner off a few of the other bits at the top of the engine just so it's nice and clear so we're going to lift and away we go okay we're ready to lift this let's do this very easily done ladies and gentlemen in youtube and patreon land up goes the engine and away just got enough lift on the ramp we're now floating, everything seems okay, everything's secure, so we can unbolt at the back here now, and then we're going to leave it, we're going to leave it on this, um, we're going to leave it on this chain, slightly tilt it back a little bit, and then we're going to offer up the flex plate, and then we're going to lower it down onto some chocks, just still on the engine stand to get the gearbox on. So we'll be putting some bracing underneath the engine just to support it while we fit that gearbox at the back. So first job for me to unbolt the, the engine assembly crane itself 
shouldn't be too difficult. Spanners at the ready, let's go. Okay, just got a sort of equilibrium between the two items, the hoist and the engine stand, and then we should be able to get draw out. Indeed we can. Just get that out. So that's a trolley engine stand coming away. And now we're free. The engine suspended in there. And there it is. So that gives us access to this side, which is what we want, just here. Ready to get the spigot burning out. There's our spigot. It's got to be removed. Yeah, it is in there. Just in the end, you got your spigot. That's going to be fun. That's quite difficult to do. Got a hydraulic it out. We'll do that now. We've done it once before on Ruby's engine. We're going to do it again now for Bramble. The quicker we get this done, the safer it becomes once the gearbox is on and it's in the cradle. We're a lot better off, folks. So, I'm going to put some grease into this now. This spigot bearing is for the end of the clutch, it slots in, centres everything. But you don't need it on an automatic gearbox. And indeed, you've got to take it out because the, the nib of the torque converter goes into here. So we've got to get this out anyway. Now they're pushed in, but what you do if you pack grease into it and get a dowel and you whack the dowel, the grease comes back on itself and the idea is you hydraulic it out. So we'll get on and do that now. Speak it bare enough. Then we can bolt the flex plate on. And we'll take you through that ARP bolt process soon. I'm just going to bolt these back onto the engine stand so we don't lose them. The engine stand then is finished and done. We'll catch you in just a second. Okay, so you're overhead with me. <coughs> Excuse me, you're on the tripod. Can you see? Yep, you can. I just sometimes have to check on the screen that, you, that I'm in. Sharp. It's, we're not a professional camera organisation here. Right, using a soft face mallet because I'm going to use a socket. Plenty of packed, packed with plenty of grease. It's quite a good fit this socket, I think it's a 10 mm. it is, 10 mm socket. I've put a bolt in the socket with some masking tape on it to kind of seal the end of the socket so it's basically a solid bar. The best thing to use would be a solid bar of just the right diameter, but I've not quite got my hands on any solid bar just yet. So I packed the grease into the, the opening where the spigot bearing is, and the theory is, is that the grease is non-compressible and when you strike the socket it tries to pressurize the cavity and it's basically solid so it forces the bearing backwards on itself so you just strike it so it's all the way in and you'll see how it's pushed the grease you can just about see it there I'm sorry it's going to be a little bit small on your screen and then it brings the bearing forward which it has that's nearly out. I'll do a couple more strikes and that's gone. So I'll go again, pack it with some more grease because you lose a little bit. Go in again, we'll put more grease in the end because again you lose some there. It's a bit messy, it's a bit uh, gunky but it works. You can see that's trying to push the socket out straight away on just my, my hand. I'll zoom you in now. Rare use of the zoom. Here we go, so we can get you zoomed in. A bit better. Okay, there you go, a little bit better. So I'm just going to strike that. You can bottom out on the end. And there's the spigot, almost ready to take out. A couple more hits, I reckon, and we'll have it. Let's see if we can do it while you're on. Okay, we're nearly out. What I found worked best was fast blows. Seems to get it. Let's just check you're still on. I'm going to flip the screen. Yep, you're still on. Yeah, fast blows tend to be the one. If you tap it slow, you don't seem to get anywhere. Slow blow. Now you hear that go then? That was it. It popped it out. There it is. So it just needs 
you to hit it quite quickly and make sure you're dead dead on centre. Oh, it probably needs another hit. It's, can you see that? It's popping out the end. Let's see if we can finish it off. And just send it send it home. I don't know where all the grease has gone. <laughs> it just disappeared, but probably on the cloth. Yeah. A lot of the grease just seems to have disappeared. John Travolta isn't going to be happy. See how it's squidgy squadgy like a uh, air suspension there? Boom. It's like a very squidgy. Uh, it reminds us. Oh, reminds me of something else actually. I'm not going to mention it. 18, 19 year olds. Uh, Whoa! What happened then is, whoa! Okay, it bounced out then I hit it back, I hit it back with the ammo, it actually went on the first first hit. Spigot bearing out then. A little bit of hydraulic action was the way to do it. We've salvaged it, I don't think it's damaged. It could always be used for someone, but they're probably pence anyway. So that gets it out without any major problems. About 20 attempts. Like I said, what seems to work with it is when you strike it quite quickly and sure and dead on target. So, right, with that out of the way, what we can do now is we can we can bolt the flex plate on. So I'm going to dig the flex plate out. I think it's in one of the storage trays, and then we'll get the ARP nuts and we'll torque them up on the end here. So we'll have a, a flex plate on there, and there's also a dust plate to go on as well. We must make sure that. The flex plate and the dust plate don't interfere with each other. We may need to put the dust plate on first, but I seem to remember you can hook them over. You certainly can on, on clutch cars, clutch operated cars. Right, it's out to stores, but that was the that was a spigot bear removal. Let's get that clutch plate and dust cover done. Here we go. Here's our dust cover, dust plate, sandwich plate, a new it's powder coated, so a new foam pad seal on the other side of it fits in a recess then we line the tabs up and our dust pad goes on our sandwich plate goes on with the, the foam sealing strip just you can just see that there new strip I'll flip it round so new foam sealing strip on and that ready to go so we're going to clip that in place now and then we'll get this flex plate bolted on here we go it's going well so far percent sure that goes on first then we can open up our ARPs Woo. should be some fit instructions inside here if we carefully separate out the pack you'll see the torque settings that we need I think they're unbeneath they're behind here so that's what we're looking at before we can get it's getting really warm it's a warm day today Everything's melting down outside. I've heard rumours of roadblocks and uh, total lockdowns. Let's see what we can do. We'll get all the bits we can before it's too late. There we are. It's looking like something like this. We're gonna have some dinner. It's midday. It's actually later than midday. It's two o'clock. It's dinner time. Okay, I'm now ready to start applying the the fastener assembly lubricant just under the head of the bolts. This is the, the ARP bolts. It's a little bit 
of that compound under there and a little bit of blue thread locker just goes just on the end of the bolt you don't want too, too much on there never use red always blue thread locker you want and with the head of that ARP bolt with that sort of grease assembly compound on it helps to give it a more accurate torque setting they give you much more than what you need just comes in this pouch here I've done this a few times that goes under and then the blue thread lock just at the end Loctite 242 equivalent I have got some 242 I don't know where it's gone this is still ok I don't know how much we've got left we might be low on this no nope, we've got enough to do this job you don't need a lot Few more to go, three more to go. Let's get those out. On we go. And then we crisscross pattern these in a minute with the torque wrench. Again the blue. I think we'll just have just have enough left to do this job. If not, I've got another tub somewhere. We have got enough. Whoa! No, we don't want that much. Let's share that with the other bolt. Share that out. Put that upside down. This one's ready. Still see us? Yeah, you can. As usual, I always check. A little bit of this now. Head of, under the head of the bolt. Away we go. In we go. One more to go. Red is unseparable, blue you can always take them out, although I don't think I'll ever be taking this off in my lifetime, but we don't want any famous last words. One more please. Just enough. I'll get the last bit out. Definitely was the end of the line for that tube. That took. what I'll do. That's on its way out. We'll open it up. It's gone anyway. Get the last bit. There it is. There's always a bit in the bottle you can pinch when you're running out. So I'll just do it at the end. Not a lot on. And then one more. That is it. And we're going to crisscross these. 70 foot pounds on the uh, torque wrench. 
I'm not sure what size it looks like. It could be 17. So let's go now and get the socket and the torque wrench. We'll get those locked down. Okay, the torque wrench is set on 70 foot pounds. I've got a, a 19 mil bar, breaker bar on the front of the crank to hold it. Otherwise, what's going to happen is this will try and spin, it'll try and turn the engine over as I'm getting the lock on for the um, for the flywheel bolts. And then you've just got to come up. Hold on, we're going to get this. We could lock the could lock the wheel but this will work. Got to stabilise. It's a little bit tricky because we're on the stand. It will go like that. So that's one. Mark that. Now opposite. We're going crisscross. I'm trying to stabilise. It's a little bit tricky but it'll go. Up we go. Oof. That's that one. Hope you can still see there. Right. Opposites. Next one. Holding the crank with the 19. Knee just under the sump a little bit. Boom. It's that one. Opposite that one now. Up we go. Here we go. Locking out. Come on. Boom. Okay, two more. A little bit of a workout for the evening. 15 on, but I found that the uh, five, five eighths was a better fit. Up we go. 70, come on. Boom. We know there's only one more left. We're going to mark it. Come on. Whoa! Got ya. Whoa! A workout. So they're done to 70. As per spec. And there's our little info sheet which comes with the ARP just tucked in at the back. And I've just re-watched the uh, Ruby videos and I just re-watched the, the Ruby videos to see how I did it. That, I think I might have incorrectly mentioned that's a, a flex plate spacer. In some cases it is. On the Pinto here it's actually a sandwich plate to basically reinforce the centre of the flex plate stop it shattering, it's just a strengthening piece it's like a very large washer so all, all done on 70's crisscrossed a little bit of blue lock tight on them and then the the assembler gel which just stops the friction and gives you more accurate stop points so our torque wrench there, foot pounds double checking that was, we were set 70, well 73 then wind back the three on the handle landed us on 70 foot pounds they're all on we can now get the gearbox on what we're going to do a little bit different than how i did project ruby because on project ruby i had a block and tackle and i was able to land the engine into the cradle then put the gearbox in this time i'm on an engine crane and it won't let me manoeuvre the dolly jig underneath the engine crane to land this into the into the frame. So we're going to have to lower the engine down, then bring the gearbox in this way, and then we've got to get it to sit on the torque converter. It's going to be tricky. With one person, it's going to be tricky. Well, let's see what we can do. I must admit, when I do these, I always think, are they really tight enough? Because there's no going back with them. But the combined strength of them, you know, 70, did click. And it, as I said, lock your crank, otherwise it just tries to spin the wheel. So lock your crank to your 19. And then torque up on your brand. So that was it. They're all done. 
I'll reposition the tripod for you so we can see me struggle and try and get this in. The world's falling to pieces. I'm trying to keep a, a brave face on it and we don't really mention those kind of things here but suffice to say that uh, there's various lockdowns in place to do with the virus. And uh, curiously, on one of my early films, I was doing a Matrix parody thing with uh, Agent Smith, A. E. Smith. A virus, Mr. Anderson, a, a virus. Okay. We have a marvel of it. Let's go. Okay, here we go. Let's lock and load. One gearbox going on to one Pinto. Project Bramble. We're on the way. Looking forward to it. Not looking forward to trying to lift the whole gearbox up. Here we are gonna go. We need to be down at the same level as the box. Ain't no way I'm lifting that. Time to lower the engine. Talk together. Talk to me. Now you're talking to me, baby. Now you're talking to me, baby. I didn't come across a no banana boat. Now you're talking to me, baby. I didn't come across a no banana boat. Now you're talking to me, baby. You've got a face that looks like you haven't had a can of pop in a week, in a month. Now you're talking to me, baby. We're talking about docking in the easiest ways. We need a 19 to line up the torque converter bolts. We've got to go through into the flex plate. I'm looking like we're interested in having a little chat. Oh, yeah. We're interested. Let's have a little chat. Gearbox and engine. Let's get together. Right, I'm just going to line up. A few bits of Bob, see what Boris wants. Okay, we offer it up so that the torque converter bolts line up the flex plate holes and we just have to wiggle and jiggle a little bit, just a little bit of sideways, a one-two buckle my shoe, a little bit of a jiggle and you'll feel that gearbox into place. Keeping your eye on the sandwich plate as well, making sure it stays on and then just wiggle in, which we've done, wiggle it just a little bit and now we need to get some bolts in at the top. 
some bolts in at the side just to hold it together before we spin it round and put the, uh, the securing bolts in for the flex plate. I've dug these ones out, I'm not 100% sure that they're correct. The thread's right, I don't know if the diameter of the bolt's correct, the size of the bolt. So I'll, I'll be checking that out, but for now at least I can get it bolted together. But we'll make a note, we'll, we'll put a, tie, uh, um, a wire tie on it saying, a label parcel tie, saying that the torque flex bolts, torque converter flex bolts may not be correct. So, um, so we don't forget, alright? So do that before the starter goes on. Let's find some engine bolts now and bolt it together. Should draw the two halves together. So there's our marriage. Looking good. And then the whole affair can then be jostled on somehow onto the jig. We'll, we'll work out a way of doing it. There'll be a way. All right. Okay, two halves coming in nice now. One bolt on that side, pulling through the eyelet. The locating tabs are the first ones to get on. Now we, we draw together now, very nicely indeed. We're safe now, we've just two bolts on, and they're the correct ones. That is going nowhere. Pretty much safe and in the bag. We can now start to find the rest of the bolts. At least we'll get four bellowsing bolts in for now till we stabilize this situation. But that's now all one unit. So what I'm gonna do, I'll put the rest of these in. Four more to find out the box of bolts, get the correct ones, we're good to go. This will be a fun one, get the, there's the engine and box up in the air, there's the engine cradle, uh, it's a bit uh, of a jigsaw, we've straddled the, the, the uh, dolly across the legs of that, the theory is I lower that into the cradle, take the chain off and then there's not a lot of height between it. I'm hoping I can slide it off. If it works, I'll be quite impressed. It's only by accident if it does. Last time I had a block and tackle. So let's just see what happens here. I'm not going to film this in case it goes wrong. I'll be right back. I'll let you know. All right, you win. I'll film a little bit. Whoa, there we go. I'm going to need some assistance here. Hold on. Can't film with a camera in my hand. And bit tricky, but it does work. I wouldn't like to go through it again. Minimal lifting, really, and no strain on my back or anything like that. Just done purely with the chains. And really, this sort of straddles across there, and you drop it on, then you slide it off. These wheels, the dolly wheels, are pretty tough, strong wheels, so they land cock sided or half one side. And as you get towards the end, let the back wheels land, and you've just got to. I just went down on my knees with a a wooden bar and just lifted that up then pushed this back and it was okay so that worked we managed to get everything <clears throat> on I haven't got a cold by the way so that is on and all we need to do now is have a, a quick our usual obligatory tidy up get these chains out of the way before they cause any miss naminos and that is first time then for this project you saw it on project <coughs> ruby you had to think about that one then you've now seen it on project bramble we are on the jig so we're in a position where we can start getting the radiator on getting the ancillaries on getting the start motor on we'll check those torque converter bolts i think i found the right type of bolt it's got a washer built into it where is it i just had it down there I know the type now, I remember them. I haven't got them, I don't think. We're going to have to acquire some from somewhere. Stop that from rattling. Anyway, we're on for this part. It's time for well earned to break. It's Peroni time, and it's time to cook my tea because I'm hungry. I've been on it all day. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to sort of get some still shots of this for Patreons, update the Patreons, and then I'll go and get me din dins because I'm hungry. But I don't think we did too bad there. Summer's on its way as well, even though we probably won't be able to enjoy it. It's 2020. This is Project Bamble.
Junction 38 services is one of the weirdest service stations I've ever been to. It's, I mean, it's a very odd place, isn't it? Very strange. It's like huge, but there's nothing here. It's like it doesn't know what it is. Well, if you, did you go around the other side where the food hall is? Yeah, and it was like it was somebody else. It was like a village hall. Ladies and... Oh, it's got bog roll. Whoa. Bog in. Bog roll. Women's Institute, you mean? Yeah. Just proving that if Junction 38... If Junction 38's got toilet roll, anywhere has. And I think we caught the exhaust as well. Oh. I feel like going inside some toilet. Okay. We're on. And we're on the hunt for the flex plate locking bolts in my right hand is a 19 and a breaker bar to turn the engine round and you're going to see the locking studs there's four of them on the torque convert you'll see them come into view just any second there you go beautifully in your screen there that one that's on it there is the wrong the wrong type of bolt we just put them on just to secure things and keep the wool from the door. What I've done by a pure miracle, I've found a brand new set of torque converter lock bolts. I don't know how I got them. I don't know where. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't know where they're from. I don't know. I don't want to know who you use as long as they're not complete mappets. I don't know where I found them from. As long as they're not complete mappets. It's for spanking people, don't be coy, Barry Bazza. It's for spanking people, don't be coy, Bazza. What's it for, Harry? Now, if you don't want to start counting the fingers that you haven't got, you get them nuts on there. Quick! Right, in my hand are a brand new old stock set of torque flex plate. Torque converter flex plate locking bolts. How I got them, I'll never know. A little bit of blue, again to keep all front door. Right, and then, this is how you do it. There's a little inspection. Can you see the inspection hole? That's supposed to have a rubber bung in there when you're done not supplied and not located we shall have to keep our eyes out for that worst case scenario you can put a little gaffer tape square patch over there it's only to keep dust out we must remember to do it if we don't find the rubber insert i don't remember seeing it it's probably in one of these odds and sods trays so i'm just going to get that a little bit more in line for the newster. Oh, we go. There you go. Lovely. Okay, breaker bars in my right hand. This is a 13 mil. You don't have to crisscross these, so just go round as you go. So we're, we're through the starter motor aperture. If you're taking the gearbox out, ah, this is what you've got to do. Round we go to the next one. You can see those the ones I put on there when I didn't have the right ones. So they've got to come off. They're definitely not right. I knew they weren't right. They're just not the real deal. The real deal has a washer built in. So out we go with these, and that's basically all we're, all we're doing. Then we can put the starter motor in nothing to stop us just quickly pulsing the starter motor on the jig and just seeing if it engages all right and throws the engine around let's get these wrong nuts off a little bit more blue still on that tub of blue squeezing it out we've certainly maxed out that tub currently on we're currently on the UK lockdown if you want to do a date check. What are you doing for your UK lockdown? Exercising in your shed. Hopefully a lot of us will have sheds to tinker in so we don't crack up. I'd imagine it's a tinderbox for a lot of people stuck in 
under unusual circumstances. Watch that divorce rate rise. These are the right bolts. Only one more to go. So we'll leave you there. There's no point showing you any more. Unless you want to chat. Unless you want to bramble ramble. The pressure cooker. UK lockdown. All core team events cancelled. All classic car shows cancelled. And I bet you for a real bummer it'll be a good summer sod law says that it'll be a heat wave and we'll be cooking in our gardens or no garden in our flats or maisonettes or wherever we are let's hope it doesn't last too long it's got to be done but whoa ho, 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 ho. let's hope it doesn't last too long and that there's something to salvage at the end of it. One, one thing's for sure, there'll be one hell of a party when it's over. Imagine them flocking to the boozers. I sure will be missing me draft, me draft, draft peroni. I better get that, it's uh, unwanted. Okay, start the motor. A lovely new unit i think they're about 34 quid brand new not no need to exchange so it's just not worth it is it you know wow you can get this starter motor so i've got 17s on that i'm using these little cone ended bolts because they guide in a lot easier you know when you're uh, lining up your starter motor underneath the car because you have to take it off for some reason and uh, they seem to fit the exact length. And funny enough, out of all the bolts I've got, towards the end, I've started to struggle for bolts. Little jobs like this, you know. Ratchet spanner, just out of your view. We're down there. Just bringing them in. Find the right bolts on a person. Well, these are still fine. I just don't think they have the cone end on these ones. But as I said, they do guide in easier. So we'll see. Coming up now. There we go. 17. One more to go to the top. And we're done. That one there. This one needs the socket to get in. That ratchet spanner won't fit. But it's how clean and nice I've finished because we can hand wind these all the way in almost. Always good. We'll not get in. We really, really need the socket for this. Last turn. Get the socket on that and we're done. A power cable onto the starter motor. Should be able to just connect to the battery and give it a quick pulse and just see if we spin up. Should do. Obviously not too long with no hydraulic fluid in the gearbox and with a pulley wheel missing off the alternator. Can I find that pulley wheel nut? No. Can I? No chance. Well, this is it. Hold on, I'll turn down the radio. We don't want to get any copyrights for this one. Ladies and gentlemen, in Patreon and YouTube land. Patreons, uh, you see it first, of course. <laughs> hey. Okay, so warning. Watch out for CO, because this is the Fire Up video. We've assembled the engine the best that we can. We've checked everything the best that we can. We can only fire the engine up just for maybe 30 seconds because with no radiator, it's not arrived. No surprises there. Everything else ready to go. 
we need to now put fluids in the power steering and the gearbox itself initially I'll put four litres into the box and then just a little bit in there it's going to prime up we're hoping we got the hoses right bit of alliteration there hoping for hoses if this works I'll be surprised um, just made up these really temporary fittings a high pressure line in low pressure out of the steering rack forming a loop we have our fluid pump down there ready to do the necessary so we're going to place this tube here down you go there you go we're going to place that into the gearbox and get some oil in because what we don't want to be doing is even trying to turn that box without fluid in it because it's used to lubricate and move everything we don't want any uh, automatic gearbox pumps running dry we don't want a steering power system steering pump running dry so before we even try and fire it we get those fluids in let's do that fuels there waiting I've checked the fuel pump just with my finger it's drawing on my finger so that's going to definitely pump fuel in I've checked for sparks we have a spark coming out we'll double check with a spark plug in a minute but as far as I know we'll test on number one I think I've got the valve timing right I've turned the distributor so that number one uh, the rotor is on ignition lead number one whilst it's on the compression stroke so it should go oil's primed through it obviously as I said no water in it but that's okay if we don't leave it for too long but uh, we will get it running a little bit longer at 2000 revs when the radiator arrives and when they can end pressure test of course which is one of the main reasons for testing it oil leak pressure test any nuts and bolts that may be loose we think we've checked them all there is a um, we're just going to loop this pipe round here that's the vac pickup we're just going to loop it round this is the automatic gearbox takeoff tube but we've got a spare one here an anti run on outlet but we'll just loop that round I'll do that now when it's done turn that so, and get this I'll just put that on uh, without a, a hose it should be okay without a hose clip rather just pop that onto that in a sec so that's going to go onto there and close that up that's all that done and we're ready to go so let's get some fluid in now folks try getting the pipes or you pump the right way around not like I just did we blew it all to pieces we'll try it again uh, yeah I think I got the, the input and output pipes wrong on my fuel pump on my fluid pump I think the pickup pipe needs to be small let's see yeah pickup pipe needed to be small and now we fill up off we go plenty in plenty on Fill it up, plenty of it on, cover the wings, plenty on, Getting exciting as them fluids go in. Wow. Okay. Yeah, as I said, I put them, I put the tubes the wrong way around and uh, it blew the tube off and blew um, LH uh, Dextron 2 everywhere. So I have to do a little bit of mopping up, a bit of tidying up. But don't worry, we're on, we're on it, we're on it. Okay, cam cover off and going for fuel up now. So we're going to turn over. Uh, 
there's the fuel it's already in the filter so that means it's going to be making it to here any second now so you could be in this could be it as soon as the fuel hits the car it's going to pretty much well if it's set right it's going to go we've got to keep our eye on that if it fires up get ready to switch it off fire extremely sure they're ready if anything goes drastically wrong you on the tripod here I'll start filming now because this could be it. Get ready. Get ready. <laughs> what did you just hear then? Now, the exhaust just wants to tie wrapping up. It's ticking over like a dream. Did you hear that, Patreons? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm, a, uh, I'm surprised. Wow, get some wide zips on this. Oh my God. I'm going to keep the camera rolling, everybody. This is, you may as well stay with me. There's no point turning the camera off. I know I'm off, I know I'm off screen. But there's no point turning the camera. Let's just get this um, exhaust. We don't, want to hear, we don't want to hear rattling sounds, okay? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? We don't want it ruined by rattling sounds. Let's get this. Let's get this on. Come on. Let's play the game. Come on, Freddy. Play the game. Wow. I, 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 he just... Whoa, 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 whoa. Right. I don't know how. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I forgot. Hang on, hang on. Let me sort myself out. Do you know what with this, uh, all these shops shutting down, who's going to do me air? I don't know who's going to do me air. Oh my God, forget that. Now, CO2 warning, CO2 warning. Oh, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. CO2 one, I don't want any of that, let's get I already, already feel a bit weird. dizzy down and it's twisted hold on hey and here's another thing try getting your ignition lead uh, firing order right <laughs> one three four two not one two three uh, not one two four three now I got that one two four three from a book and I'm sure it was the overhead valve engine check just to see if I picked that but that didn't help. It fired with the uh, two of the leads the wrong way around. But now. Okay, that noise you heard then. The power steering pump has now took all its fluid and gone into the pipe. So it's now, because it's hollow, it's making that noise. So we now need to top up the power steering pump and carry on but I can't see any leaks on it through that system we can always wire it in a, a loop on itself but I've got it going into the steering rack just to see if I can get my steering rack to run but engine looking good there so 
a big milestone as uh, Cider Andy Riley says on the Patreon, a big milestone. And obviously we keep our eye on the temperature. We're okay yet, just creeping into the bottom of the blue there. Oil pressure is good. Well, let's check that now. It's time to just get them fluids in. Let's get the rest of it in. Have we got enough? We may as well stay on. Let's see if it's dry. It will be dry. Bone dry. So we've got to be careful with that. Let's get the last of the fluid in. Okay, I've got some more. I just need to dig it out. There is another load of house, uh, Dextron 2 out there. So exciting times, everybody. We've achieved what we wanted. Very exciting times. <laughs> Get the rest of this in now. See what we what we got with that squeal. Yep, it was the pump. So let's run. Okay, so let's have a summary. Um, on the safe side, the high pressure output of the pump, we've got it going back into the reservoir because I noticed it trying to pull off on one of the hoses, so we're not quite sure which is the input and output of the power steering rack. We don't want to risk anything there. We need to just further investigate that situation and get some correct fittings. These on high pressure aren't going to do it, so we've had a pipe and start to spray out. We don't want any, any of that. Let's concentrate on the engine. It's a good time. Temperature is just creeping up now so we haven't got really much left in it to demo to you because the, the temperature, I have to keep my eye on that. We don't want it uh, getting any hotter now if you look. We're just under halfway. Our oil pressure, we'll give that a readout in a sec. Let's start up then I'll give you a, a walk around and then we're done for this little video to try and brighten your, your evening up considering all the things that are going on. So, Project Bramble then, engine file up. Pete made a mistake, leads a long way round, otherwise it would have gone quite nicely. You can get me for that one. There we go.
walk around. Okay, so as you can see, there's our temp. Don't want it any higher than that. So, get that bolted up. That's good. Hold that it's kicking in. I don't want to risk it any more than that. Hope you enjoyed. Catch you on the next bit. I think the next bit is to try and master that power steering setup so then we can test it locking and making sure there's no leaks around that area. We'll leave that for tomorrow. It's been a long day. Catch you soon. Hopefully get this video up tonight for you. Over and out, PC. Okay, here we go for fluid. Let's get it in. And I'll set up, flip the screen. I can't see what you can see. Okay. It's PC from Cortina City. And this is my Pinto fire up video. First things first, let's get some fluid in the box to keep the wolf from the door. Can we untangle this? Uh, not technology. Uh, woo! Right, there we go. Yes. Okay, fill me up, baby. Yeah. <laughs> That's one for the end. Woo! That is one for the end. Epic fail. There's going to be some smoke in here tonight. Wow, okay. So we got ourselves a fail there. That tube blew straight off. Underestimated the power of that pump. Lighting out, we have to mop that down. We've got ourselves a mess there. That's going to burn like crazy. We've covered the place in fluid. Let me clear that up. That's one for the end of the film.